How you doing? It's another episode of Truth Seeking Choker. We're getting to our Father's Word in the book of Lamentations, chapter 4. With that, let's begin some prayer. Father God, as we get into the study, give us eyes to see, ears to hear, that we may understand the message that's being presented to us in perfect alignment with your will for us. Father God, we thank you for giving us your word. And uh, this day of life, you know the number of our days. May we not squander it, work through our life efficiently, and always give you our first fruits. We might always make it perfect, but in our heart of hearts, we aim to be pleasing to the Lord. And with that, we thank you in Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen. All right, let's get going. Lamentations chapter 4. Here we go. It's 22 chapters again. All right. So uh, the acrostics are still, the structure are in the front of the each verse according to the number of the Hebrew alphabet with the successing verse um, starting a new alphabetical number until you get to 16 and 17 where they're switched. And with that, Let's continue. Verse 1. How is the gold become dim? How is the most fine gold changed? The stones of the sanctuary are poured out in the top of every street. 2. The precious stones, sons of Zion, comparably to fine gold. How are they esteemed as earthen pitchers, the work of the hands of the potter? So we have here is a recognition of how God sees us, he sees us greater than gold, right? That's his, where is um, his treasure, right? His creation, he loves us very much. We need, we need to know how, who we are with God when we're following him and how he sees us. He sees us as a loved vessel. He loves us, right? Um, greater than gold, there it comes to my mind when he called us the salt of the earth right he's when jesus christ said that we got to understand the historical points of salt at one time was greater than gold also actually the roman soldiers rather get paid in salt than actually money because there were so many things that salt had value with not just refrigeration but you know electrolytes um um, I can go on and on. Uh, it'll be a lot to unpack. I can make a whole video just on that. But uh, you get the point, right? And the recognition and, and uh, situation awareness of why they and how did they end up where they're at. Let's find out. Verse 3. Even the sea monsters draw out the breast. They give suck to the young ones. The daughter of my people is become cruel like the ostrich in the wilderness. So even a thing like a sea monster, as much as it's uh, uh, considered a, uh, a ruthless and maybe not very loving creature, it still is loving towards its offspring. And the ostrich also in the wilderness um, are known to not take care of their children uh, very well, right? So knowing a little bit about the ostrich helps with understanding this. Verse, verse 4, the tongue of the suckling child cleaveth to the roof of their mouth for thirst. The, excuse me, the young children ask bread and no man breaketh it until them. So we have that and um, we got this going on and uh, the children are hungry. Why? It's because what happened at this point in time, historically, uh, it's a, a time of great famine, of great uh, sorrow. Um, the atrocities of war have shown their face. The destruction of the temple and the city is placed in ruins, right? Matthew 7, 11 reads, If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your father 
which is heaven, give good things to them that ask him. Right? That's uh that's important to understand that God knows what we need and to trust in him. People that are evil don't see themselves as evil, you know. They might step on their brother's toes to feed their children, which is not acceptable as well in the eyes of God. All right, let's go ahead and read uh Matthew 7, 10 through 12 to keep it in context. All right. Verses 10 reads, and if I he ask a fish and he give him a serpent. 11, if ye then being evil, how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your father, which is in heaven, give good gifts than to ask him? 12, therefore, all things whatsoever you shall would that man should do to you, do even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets do unto others what you do to them, right? What you want them to do to you, right? You don't give your kids presents when they of a fish to nourish them. You give them a serpent to bite them, and that's kind of like uh, the equivalent, spiritually speaking, of idolatry. Yeah, you're setting your children up for failure, right? They're gonna. It's. I've talked about it before. We all know it's easier to create a good habit than it is to break a bad habit. It's almost and I'm just throwing this number out there, like 10 times harder to break a bad habit. I don't know if it's mathematically accurate to say that, but I just, for myself and as experience, um, breaking a bad habit is extremely difficult at times. All right, next slide. Verse five. They that did feed delicately are desolate in the streets. They that were brought up in scarlet embraced dunghills. So God brought them up to importance in how to live right, how to live cleanly, how to not allow um, to sell themselves short, to live the way he intended to with dignity and, and, um, Abundance. Six, for the punishment of the iniquity, the daughter of my people is greater than the punishment of the sin of Sodom that was overthrown as in a moment and no hands stayed on her. So this is the next example of what happened when it comes to perversion of with the wrath of God. Right. Verse seven, her Nazarites were purer than snow. They were whiter than milk. They were more ruddy in body than rubies. Their poily thing was of sapphire. They were awarded these things that, spiritually speaking, were dressing them up in fine, precious gems and, and um, the pure snow of righteousness, right? That uh, talks about that in Revelations for a reward of being dressed in fine linen when it comes to the day of judgment. Now, judgment is not done there all the time with red ink. There is a reward to those who um, are rewarded by the judgment. And uh, God's letting them know, hey, that you you had it all. all right? Eight, their visage is blacker than a coal, and they are not known in the streets. Their skin cleaveth to their bones. It is withered. And become like a stick. So the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. God wants us to live right. Do right in his eyes. And by not doing so. The wrath came upon those who chose to rebel against God. And God wants us. He has blessings for us waiting. But you know. He's. he's he over and over and over. <laughs> continuously um he uh gave many opportunities to the tribe of judah to turn away and they didn't and there's uh spiritual laws in place there's another world that we can't see and it's best that we learn about it through god's word right and that that realm or or um, world or, you know, is 
is probably more important than the world we live in now because this world's going to die and there's going to be it's going to be a change coming and i believe the veil is going to be lifted and uh we're going to see that but you know at that point i believe the judgment's coming too so and verse five right here it says you were dressed in you were brought up in scarlet and you braced dunghill right what is that dunghill well it's a pile of poop right that's a reference been used multiple times by idolatry false teachings false gods right because it comes from doctrines of devils and they are and they are dung right and uh ezekiel 4 15 god answered me and said i allow you cow's dung instead of human excrement to prepare the bread on that so and even in the book of ezekiel god used then the reference or the symbolism of excrement of 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 the waste of this being what you're cooking your bread with right now we know in history during the times of the great plains when we were first frontiersmen going through the land um people were going through hard times so they used cow patties to heat up their stoves right and uh we got to understand that this is not just um a sign of of uh of unsanitary conditions but a sign of of struggling and uh and poverty and um desolation to where you're not living anymore you're surviving and god's trying to let you see that before the before it gets too bad and you you're going to suffer and so will your children so another thing i when i came into my mind when um this came was uh there's one who is that dung, and that's Beelzebub. Uh, I got this in the Strong's 954. One of the names is Satan. He's a chief evil prince, and it's referred to as the dung god, right? So when the people were going to this, uh, to this teaching, they're going to Satan himself, right? And God's saying it symbolically of them hugging on a pile of dung, like embracing it, like giving a big hug. A big pile of poop. I mean, that's as crude as it sounds. We need to understand that's the way God sees it. We seek God's face and um, we want to please the Lord, right? He has our best interest in, in um, and there's a fly right here. I'm speaking to the devil. Ooh, I got it too. See, the Lord give me the strength to take out the flies. All right, right on my face. What's the, what coincidence? Huh? I don't believe in coincidences. All right. I'm not one of those guys that devils behind every bush, but you know what? You got to call it for what it is. We rebuke you, Satan in the name of Jesus Christ and uh, stay out of this Bible study. We're putting the message of God out there and uh, know who we are with the Lord. Second Corinthians 11, 13 through 15. For such as false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves in the apostles of Christ. Not everyone who comes to us saying that they're apostles of Christ, are apostles of Christ. Verse 14, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Like, no wonder, right? There's no, you shouldn't be surprised about this. He's a liar and a, and a murderer from the beginning, right? 15, therefore, it is no great thing if the ministers also tra be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. The Bible teaches us to identify these people by their works, by their fruits. They, as we did in our study of Jeremiah, remember some of the um, false prophets and the rulers of the tribe of Judah had beautiful names of God, like Yah is my deliverer, Yah is my provider, right? And I can't recall what their names were exactly, but um, the translation was that, but they're as wicked as they came. Right. With a beautiful name like that. And uh, they come from God. They gave the, the titles of understanding of what God does for us and how grateful we should be. Their people and their character were wicked. So understand that somebody's name does not define them. It's the context of their character. Right. Hebrews 2, 13 through 15. And again, I will put my trust in him and who in Christ Jesus. And again, Behold, I am the children which God has given me. 14, for so much then the children 
are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself took of the same through the death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, that is Christ destroying the works of the devil by the, by his crucifixion. He stomped on that devil's head in Genesis 3.15. Hebrews 2.15, and delivered them who through fear of death with all their lifetime subject to bondage. All right? Now, I like to, um, when I speak about the demonic, you could, you could do your own thing, but I believe the Lord, um, he wants us to find the balance, right? Not just about, let's talk about demonic all day and there's no solution, right? There's no recognition that Christ defeated Satan. Um, and I'm not trying to dictate how you minister, but I found it found peace within my soul when I when I uh, find that balance that Christ has already won. Our God has perfect plan has already come to completion and now in the church age it's a time to accept or to reject either way you're going to have to make a decision there is no um there is no uh neutral there is no uh being on the sidelines and riding the fence you'll be driven into one if you don't make a choice Let's go to verse 9, back to Lamentations 4. They that be slain with the sword are better than they that be slain with hunger. For these pine away, stricken through the faint of the fruits of the field. Verse 10. The hands of the pitiful women have soldered their own children, and they are meat in the destruction of the daughter of my people. They have, uh, I know it's crude, but... You gotta understand, God wants us to see the emotion of what this, what's going on. You know what? It needs to be said. Don't shy away now when people's lives are in danger, right? You want the the pain, painful truth, or do you want a sweet lie? Because if you're still searching for a sweet lie, you might put yourself in 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 a bad situation, right? Don't be afraid of change. Don't be afraid of the correction of God. We seek it. We want it. We need it, right? We don't want to be taken down the road like tri a tribe of Israel and the tribe of Judah and what it looks like, um, what's happening today in the United States as well, right? And Matthew um, 13 through 14. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leads them to life, a few there be that find it. 15, beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but in, inwardly they are ravening wolves. 16, you shall know them by their fruits, right? Remember the fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? You shall see, right? When you see this, it's there's no such thing as half a truth, right? It either is or it isn't, right? Oh, they're doing half of God's work, but the other half, we're going to ignore it. No, you don't ignore it. Right. We don't let we don't keep uh, um, idols in our church. We don't keep um, celebrating pagan religions that take away from the the um, the purest day of Christianity, which is the high Sabbath. We don't replace the rabbit with our with our Lord Jesus Christ. Right. We don't do these things. Right. There's no half truth. We don't do it to bring in the crowds to bend towards the world. Oh, we're getting a little low on um, on uh, attendance. So we, you're going to have to do things to bring in the crowds. Well, you know what? People are going to see that you're lying to them. And the real ones that are trying to follow the Lord are going to leave. And I'd rather have one person, one person, than a whole church full of people that are hypocrites. And I'm not saying that you can't change. I'm not saying that you can't turn away and repent. But let's get real. Let's quit looking at quantity and look at quality, right? Verse 17 of Matthew 7. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. 18, a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, and neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. 
19. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. You're going to be burned in an internal fire. 20. Wherefore, you shall be fruits, you shall know that know them. So understanding, there's a, uh, a place of uh, joy. There's a place of, of uh, comfort, eternal, or the place of damnation, pain and suffering. Um, it's not a choice for me. I, I don't want to go any place where, I mean, life's hard enough as it is. Why are you going to go somewhere place worse after this? Right? Verse uh, 11. The Lord has accomplished his fury. He hath poured out his fierce anger and hath kindled a fire in Zion. And he hath devoured the foundations thereof. 12. The kings of the earth and all the inhabitants of the world will not have believed that the adversary and the enemy should have entered into the gate of Jerusalem. Through, because they thought, oh, we're God's children. We can do whatever we want. And God, God has our back. No, they were warned over and over and over. And when the masses or the people, the population, the common man looked between this conflict between Jeremiah and the false prophets, they turned to their government instead of seeking God's face and understanding this ain't right. This ain't right. I'm sure it was as simple as a child can understand. But there's like, well, the government can't be wrong. Why would they be wrong? You know, they're so they're so righteous and holy. Um, they know what they're doing. Well, when you assume things like that, the devil will appeal to that as well. Verse 13, for the sons, oh, excuse me, for the sins of her prophets and the iniquities of her priests, they have shed the blood of the just in the middle of her or the midst of her. 14, they have wandered as blind men in the streets. They have polluted themselves with blood so that no man could touch their garments. So they've, you know, they've, they've destroyed things, right? They destroyed things. They, they, um, they remember the judgment starts in the house of God, right? These preachers and, and priests, this is, this is not just, let's go up and, you know, speak some good words, make people feel good. You're going to get judged, man. Me even speaking this, speaking this to you, I'm held to a standard. But I'm going to tell you this much. I love you all. I don't know you, but God has made, gave me a heart to where I am concerned about people's um, place in eternity. Right? I want you to go to heaven. I'm not here, preacher. Oh, I'm going to be gone. I'm going to fly away out of here. I'm preacher of rapture. So they're on their own. I'm not one of those, right? And I know I'm not saying that people aren't deceived when it comes to that. I'm using it as an example. People are asleep in the church because they think they're going to be gone and we're going to leave them to their own demise. Well, we need to fight while we're here. We need to fight. Why? Because Christ didn't give up on us. We don't give up on our brethren, right? Just like in, um, just like in the military, right? There was the greatest camaraderie ever that I experienced besides the church was in the military, right? And um, in the church, I feel it too, right? It's a, it's a place where we can, as just like the military, um, all people of different races, uh, genders could get together, work together. And um, I believe God blesses the United States military, but we're seeing some corruption going on as well. So the question is, how long will that still may, be maintained to that standard? I think the longer we go into um, iniquity and sin, the farther we're going to fall. There is no, there is no uh, fruits that are bared besides wicked fruit, if that's the case, right? God's word is unchangeable. Um, where are we at? Verse 15. They cried unto them, Depart ye, it is unclean, depart and to touch not. When they fled away and wandered, they said among the heathen or the nations, no, heathen is another way for nations, they shall no more sojourn there. So do not do things that are unclean. Do not do things that are unrighteous in the eyes of God. 
Okay, so we're in verse 16. Again, remember the pay and the I A N are switched in alphabetical order, right? It's to get emphasis to pay attention to verses 16 through 17. Verse 16, the anger of the Lord had divided them. He will no more regard them. They respected not the persons of the priest. They are favored, not the elders. The house of God is judged, right? This is the mouth of the, the enemy and the, and the um, what's coming down on them, right? And God has spoken against them. And when God's against you, well, you're in a world of hurt. You're in a world of hurt. Let's go to Luke 7, 21, 23. And this is, a, I believe, a good cross-reference for verse 15. The things that are unclean, like the leper, right? 21. And in the same hour, he cured many of the infirmities and plagues and the evil spirits. And to many that were blind, he gave sight. So remember... Christ, when he was walking on the earth, the son of man, um, the Pharisees were so religious, they could not see the son of God. And so God went to whosoever will listen, the ones suffering, the ones that were possessed, the ones that were blind, the ones who were bondage and wanted salvation and, and freedom. Right. Verse 22. Then Jesus answered and said unto them, go your way and tell John that these things have I seen and heard. Now that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, to the poor the gospel is preached. 23, and blessed is he who, whosoever shall not be offended in me. So, you know, God's not a respecter for persons. He's going for whosoever will listen. Whosoever will listen. This is not a popularity contest. It's not seeing how popular we can be with our fellow man our fellow, uh, our brethren, right? This is about pleasing God, God and God alone, right? We got to understand if we stay focused on the cross, we'll be all right, right? We'll be all right. But when we keep our eyes off that and uh, we return to traditions of men instead of God's word, we're um, heading down the wrong path. Okay, verse 17. Here's the A-N. As for us, our eyes are yet failed for vain help. In our watching, we have watched for nations could not save us. So they're beginning to see that their eyes, right? Their eyes, the nations could not save us, right? Because the tribe of Judah went to the Pharaoh of Egypt to backstab King Nebuchadnezzar. But God told uh, King Zedekiah that the king of Babylon will be taking it will take it over and to surrender to him and live why do you ask that happens because um god was giving us uh an overshadow of what's going to happen in the end times when the king of babylon satan himself comes and and um deceives the world okay verse 18 of lamentations they hunt our steps that we cannot go in our streets our end is near. Our days are fulfilled. For our end has come. So it's like a place of hopelessness. 19. Our persecutors are swifter than the eagle of the heaven. They persuade us upon the mountains. They have laid for us in the wilderness. Now at this point, this eagle is referenced to like the king of Babylon being eagle's wings and a lion that stood up like a, like a man. In Daniel 7, right? You got to remember the eagle is a predatorial um, animal, right? The eagle and the four living creatures is a different one. That's the that's the one that's um, the good eagle in, and this one is the evil one, right? Remember, um, Satan's a counterfeit. He's almost like a virus. He replicates. Right, replicates to pervert things. First uh, Peter five seven through nine. Cast in on all your care upon him, for he careth for not. Eight. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Nine. Whom resisteth steadfast in the faith, 
knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. So there are many people suffering you know, um, in the world right now. Christians, Americans got it good. We do have it good. We can, we can worship Christ at this moment of time. We worship our Father um, anytime we want, right? We're starting to see persecution now. And there may even come a time where they drive us back like first century Christianity, where we have to go underground. I don't know how bad it's going to get, but I wouldn't be surprised if that if that happened, right? And prepare mentally for a situation like that, right? Verse 20 of Lamentations 4, the breath of our nostrils, the anointed of the Lord had taken in their pits, of whom he said, under his shadow, we shall live among the heathen. Right, Ezekiel, remember, um, the uh, excuse me, the valley of dry bones, where God's breathing life back into those spiritually dead people, and they came to life. Right, I will Ezekiel thirty-seven five, I will make breath into you, and you will come to life. Right, this is God saying that He's going to bring them back. Excuse me, that's uh, the Ezekiel, but um, ver verse twenty was uh, was the um, the reconciliation of God's people to the Lord, right? And and in that sense, God will breathe life back into him. So that was the the context of verse twenty. Verse twenty one: Rejoice and be glad, or daughter of Edom, that dwelleth in the land of Uz. The cup also shall pass through unto thee that shall be drunken and shall make thyself naked. So the cup of wrath, 22, the punishment of thy iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. He will visit thy iniquity, O daughter of Edom, and discover thy sins. God knows everything. He already knows, so you might as well come clean. It's written in the book. Everything we do, say and think. Right, all held accountable. Do you think you're going to be righteous enough to enter heaven without the blood of Christ? Well, friend, I would not uh, go there. Re repent and turn to the Lord. Give Him your life. And we're dealing with eternity. Why take that chance? Ezekiel 37, 15 through 22 reads, And the word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, 16, Moreover, thou son of man, take the one stick, and write upon it for Judah and for the children of Israel. His companions then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim. For all the house of Israel is his companion. Verse 17. And join them one to another into one stick, and they shall become one in thy hand. 18. And when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, Wilt thou show us that which meanest by these? 19, say unto them, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel, whose fellows, I will put them with them, even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they shall be one in my hand. They shall be one Israel under God. 20, and the sticks where thou writest shall be in thy hand before thy eyes. 21, and, and say unto them, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the children of Israel, from among the heathen or the nations, whether they be gone and gather them in every side and bring them into their own land. This is this was accomplished in 1948, right? People are coming back and, and continue to. 22, and I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be their king to them all, who that's Jesus Christ. And there will be no more two nations, neither shall be they be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all. So this is going to be during the millennium, right? This is going to be the, the bringing back of the children of God and uh, away from the rebellious world. And they'll be set apart, right? Set apart from the world. We live in the world, but we're not part of the world. We're not of the world. So uh, God bless you. Take care and have a great rest of your day.